Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Nine Inning Know It All podcast. I am your host, Josh, and I am excited for today's guest. He is a guest writer, actually, for Nine Inning Know It All, as long as well as being the head coach of the Lake Sumter State College in Florida, the softball team there. So excited to have him on. It's going to be fun. He actually just wrote a uh, a letter that we ended up posting on Nine Inning Know It All just a couple weeks ago. It is it was an amazing, amazing. Uh, thing that he wrote. I want to actually talk to him a little bit about that when he comes on. Before we get into that, though, guys, once again, I want to say thank you to the Patreon supporters. It has been, uh, it, it's the last couple of weeks have been rough. I mean, I think that's the best way to to put it. It's been rough the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is day 21 for me without baseball, without softball. This podcast has been really a lifesaver in some ways because it's been able to allow me to interact with different individuals talking about baseball, talking about softball. It's been a lot of fun, you know, still trying to do the YouTube videos as much as possible, but without being at games, I can't photograph, can't do videos. It makes it a lot tougher. So I, I, I'm doing this podcast, loving it. And it's really, once again, it, thanks to the uh, Patreon supporters who have been, really sticking behind me 100% of the time. It means a lot to me. So thank you to them. Uh, but guys, let's go ahead and get into this. So Jay, how are you doing today? Um, beginning my, well, actually not beginning, but middle of my third week of working at home, which is uh, kind of weird for a coach to say. Yeah, I know. I've been talking with with a few coaches the last week and a half or so, and they're, it's so weird for them to have days off in the spring because you just don't get that. Even players, they don't have spring breaks. It's nonstop ball. So for you, what are you doing to help pass the time and get you through this time? Oh, man. Uh, I'm trying to obsess over everything but not get obsessed over one thing, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> I, I went back and I looked at all – because we actually got uh, 30 games in under our schedule. We just didn't – we weren't able to start conference. You know, living in Florida, we were able to start at the end of January. So I've been uh, kind of obsessing over notes that I made throughout the season, what we need to improve on. I've started rebuilding um, kind of our first month or two months of pitching, what we're going to do with our pitchers starting again over in the fall. So that's kind of what I've been working on right now. As, as far as recruiting goes, you can't really do too much. Everything's locked down at the moment. But, uh, you know, I'm getting emails, receiving emails, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, with everybody, you know, locked in their houses and there's really no high school games going on anywhere, you know, recruiting is a pretty big challenge, especially with this going on. So what are some uh, unique things that you think are going to end up happening in terms of recruiting for, um, you know, whether it be juniors or seniors coming out of high school? What are things that they're going to have to do and things that you as a coach are going to have to do to really make sure you have the team you want going forward? Um, well, one thing I've really been able to do well at Lake Sumter is I get my recruiting done early. So I actually only had one scholarship remaining for a, a class of 2020 member. Um, and we have to reevaluate that now. And, and to answer your question, it's going to be really tough because as far as junior college goes, my kids didn't lose any years of eligibility, whatnot. So my freshman this year will come back as freshman next year. Um, but I've already signed, I think, 10 kids right now. And that's what's going to make it interesting in, in the future going forward. I've had NCAA coaches contact me and go, I'm interested in so-and-so, but I've got to wait and see if we're approved to bring uh, my original third baseman back. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to see how things go. But as far as the kids go that are in high school, I think it's really kind of, this is their wheelhouse. They have technology. They can go outside. They can film their swing, you know. People think of these recruiting videos as four and five minutes long. It takes us about 30 seconds or less to see if your swing is what we want to work with. Um, so I think this is really going to be in their wheelhouse, and, and they're going to be able to do the technology portion, and it's going to be the coaches who have to catch up. Yeah, definitely. Technology is going to play a big part in, during this time, and you're already seeing it with uh, a lot of recruits you know, making videos of themselves in the garage swinging, that type of stuff. So that part of it is actually – you know, it's good to kind of even force that change a little more. You have some coaches who weren't doing that. And this kind of helps that out. But, you know, for you, you're being a part of, you know, Lake Sumter, 
uh, it's actually a relatively new program in terms of softball. And so what has been your experience so far? And what are some things that you've enjoyed and even some struggles you've had, you know, coaching there? Well, uh, a little bit of background on us. I took over uh, in, in 2015, August of 2015, and we took over a program um, that averaged 11 wins a year for 10 years, and that's out of 60 games a year. So we were taking over a struggling program. And so what we've had to do with our restrictions on scholarships is we've had to recruit people first. And that's been a big, big kind of push for us is we've got to get kids who, okay, yeah, they're talented, but are they coachable? Can we take their talent and push it to a collegiate level? And then by the time they're sophomores, they're, they're right where they need to be and ready to go on to a four year. So, uh, for instance, we had a catcher come through our program that never started in high school, didn't, didn't play in high school for whatever reason, came to us, worked her tail off. She became a two-year starter, and now she's a starting uh, catcher at a four-year institution. So that's been the experience for us is trying to recruit people first. And we're starting to see a shift in how we approach uh, coaching and how our staff approaches our players. And that's starting to draw some interest from recruits. Yeah, definitely. I know, you know, looking at the junior colleges here up in the Northwest that I cover, and a lot of the best programs recruit the, the guys who grind the hardest, guys who maybe aren't the most talented, but really put in the time and the effort. Because really, absolutely, time and effort will beat out talent a lot of the times. And that's something that I think a lot of younger athletes need to realize that when you put the work in, you can get better and be the starting player. Yeah, we last year, um, 2019, we had two freshmen who had no other scholarship offers except for us. Both of them ended up leading our team in hitting, and both of them were all conference. And so we kind of uh, nicknamed ourselves the Island of Misfit Toys. And now I've got one of them uh, I was talking to a big time Division One program about because she's also a 4.0, and the other one is talking to a top 25 Division Two program in the country. So it, it's it's fascinating what you can do with the right person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, obviously right now, you know, I'm up in Washington, so we've been dealing with this for a little bit, but for you in Florida, what are things you're doing as a coach to maybe encourage your players and your team to get through this? Cause obviously this is, this is weird. This is a unique situation that we've never seen before. What things are you trying to do to help your players get through this? Um, well, I can tell you this, this is how weird it is. Um, we were told, uh, you know, this is a plan moving forward. I talked to uh, our players about it. And the last thing I remember is we had practice. I went in and was scouting and, and putting together the reports for the number one team in the nation. That's who we played and 48 hours after that practice. And then boom, everything was shut down. Um, a weird story. A buddy of mine is a NCAA division two coach up in New Hampshire. And he was actually, on our field practicing because they came down to Florida for their spring trip when he got the phone call that, Hey, you're not even allowed back on campus. Everybody's got to go home. And so, you know, it, it, it got really crazy for about 24 hours, like what is happening? And, and so, um, but to keep in contact, the girls give me weekly updates on their academics uh, through email. Um, we're, I have a 24 seven open door policy. So for us not to communicate is very odd. So it, it usually isn't me, but one of my girls will send out a text or, or a group chat or something, just checking in on everybody, and I'll check in on them. But everybody's really kind of just retreated back to their home. <laughs> yeah, I completely understand that. But, you know, kind of on the same topic, you know, obviously you've been a, a guest writer for Nanny Know It All. You actually wrote a What Baseball or What Softball Means to Me. And then recently you actually wrote a letter that I know Kelly reached out to you to, to use for the site as well. Uh, to every athlete who didn't realize their last competition was their last. And, and that one, I mean, that, that even for me, reading that impacted me and, and kind of uh, it, it made me realize what was going on is sometimes bigger than just a game. So talk, me, talk to me a little bit about that and kind of about the situation in which you wrote about. Okay, so um, back in 2005 when I graduated high school, uh, I live in a little town, Chillicothe, Ohio. It, uh, random fact, it is the first and third capital of the state of Ohio. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, but 
they wanted to build a new school and they got the levy passed to build a new school but needed an operating budget. So they put a new levy up and basically put up that in January that if this didn't pass, we were going to cancel spring athletics. It didn't pass. Spring sports got canceled. Uh, we were kind of stuck. There was a couple of kids who were able to live in other districts um, that were able to get out and go to other high schools, but I was not one of them. I actually lived in the city of Chillicothe. And so I didn't have a, a spring senior season. And at the time, I was still looking for a baseball scholarship. So it was incredibly difficult um, to manage the day-to-day, -day, especially when you've done something for so long. And then, you know, high school, it's not like this where everybody shut down. I had colleges emailing me going, you know, when are you playing? We want to come watch you play. And it was so difficult. And I held that in as, as animosity and anger for so long until I realized there's a bigger plan out there. You know, what would have happened had I gone to another school? What would have happened, you know, had we played, blah, blah, blah. So it, I just really wanted to let them know this isn't the end all be all. It will get better, but the pain is real and it does hurt. Yeah, absolutely. I know that uh, up here in the Northwest, one of the teams I covered, the uh, the starting pitcher for the softball team, she had announced before the season even started this was going to be her final season. So when this happened, uh, it was tough. I was lucky enough to have gotten photographs of her final game. Uh, so I was yeah. excited to be able to share that with her. But you know, even for me, just as a media person, as a photographer, this hit me in a way that I couldn't explain really. And for players and coaches, I couldn't imagine that. And so you know, that's why I've really tried to encourage people to talk with other people because this is something that you really need to talk about because just to get it out there can help. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and it's like everybody wants to be mad at someone, but there's no one to be mad at. So it, it's really good to talk about it, get those feelings out, and, and see what you can do about moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So, so going back, you know, obviously you've been a head coach for a while. You mentioned that there's been, you know, the program you're in wasn't really a winning program. Um, but for you, you've actually, you guys had a winning season in 2018. You know, you've gotten, you have your 100th win already with the program. What things have you tried to really institute beyond just, you know, recruiting people over player, but what things have you really tried to instill in that program overall? Um, the number one thing we focus on in the fall, because it is a junior college, so we have a lot of time, a lot of practice, a lot of fall games together with these girls. We, we focus on in the fall, listen, it's not about the numbers that you put up on this field. I don't care if you break the home run record, break the RBI record. I really don't care. It's are you using Lake Sumter as a platform to be successful for the rest of your life? And that, I think, is becoming the draw with us. In the fall, we focus not on competition, but about learning softball skills, competing with yourself, and how to translate that into your normal everyday life when softball ends, because it will end one day. And so that's the biggest push we have kind of gone from X's and O's to we've got to prepare you for the rest of the world, using softball as that tool. So I think that's the biggest kind of difference um, in at least the last three years where uh, I kind of started, I wouldn't say going off the tracks, but doing what I wanted to do instead of what I thought I should be doing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, every team kind of has a, a fingerprint from their coach. And, you know, obviously this is something that, that's been important to you is really doing that. In fact, uh, you actually wrote a book uh, kind of, kind of breaking down this, this, these type of thoughts, these type of ideas for coaches to, to read and to, to look into. Yes, absolutely. Um, the book is The Island, An Unconventional Way of Coaching People, Not Players. And, and it is available on Amazon. But I kind of wrote that after um, my youngest son at eight days old was life flighted to um, a children's hospital in Brandon, Florida. And so I was there, uh, my wife and I were there for a week with my son. And within that week, I had former players, coaches, other coaches in the conference, emailing, calling, texting, what can we do? And I just thought, man, this, what we're trying to do with our program is working. It's getting to people. It's bigger than softball. And I said, I've got to get this out. So I wrote this book and 
it explains all the kinds of different weird abnormal things that we do in our program that others find fascinating um and and i kind of put it down and it's stories about me as a player as a coach as an administrator and even some as a little brother where i grew up and i wasn't even the best athlete in my house uh, my sister was a d1 athlete and she'll be the first to tell you she was better than me at everything <laughs> so but but yeah i wrote it and and i kind of just it wasn't to become a millionaire. It was, hey, sports are bigger than on-field statistics. And I'm, and I'm a stats nerd, man. Okay, I love sabermetrics analy analytics and everything like that. But sports is getting everybody ready to be successful at life. And we have this opportunity as coaches, not only coaches, as leaders, as teachers, as mentors. And so I just put it all down in, I think, 12 short chapters. I think 12. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's why I did it. That's awesome. You know, I, I was looking at it just a little bit today. I, I pulled it up on Amazon and I, I kind of was like, man, this is actually a really interesting idea and the whole format behind it. So uh, I'm going to have to check that out at some point. But, you know, you did, you know, even though you're a softball coach, you grew up playing baseball, that type of stuff, baseball in college. What teams or what players did you follow as a kid that you kind of uh, just admired when you were growing up? Um, well, Immediately, two names come to mind. Uh, growing up in, in Southern Ohio, there's Barry Larkin. Okay, so I watched Barry Larkin. I mean, from the time I can remember, I watched Barry Larkin and my dad telling me, that's the way you play the game. And, and he always said he never gets in trouble off the field. You never hear anything bad about him. That's how you approach the game on and off the field. And then, of course, you know, growing up a 90s kid, it's Ken Griffey Jr., man. I mean, <laughs> there, there, there's the kid. And, and then everybody else. So watching Griffey and then going outside with your friends and, and, and playing the wiffle ball and you got to stand like Griffey and, and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Most nineties kids will tell you King Griffey Jr. is their baseball childhood. Oh, I definitely agree with that. That was actually um, one of my favorite players growing up since I actually got to see him live a few times, but Barry Larkin, my dad's from Ohio. So I got to hear about the reds all the time as well, especially the big red machine. So yeah. Oh yeah. See, that's what my, my dad was my summer ball coach. So when we would drive home from games, we'd always listen to Joe Nuxall and Marty Brenneman. And he'd always tell me about Pete Rose and Johnny Bench and Joe Morgan and all those guys. So yeah, I grew up on stories of the big red machine too. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's one of the staples for any kid of a, a baseball fan for the Reds and stuff. So you no, know, Jay, also kind of looking at this, you know, this is uh you know, once again, we talked about, this is a weird time, you know, we just, you know, things that, I don't know, it, it just, it's, it's weird. I, I don't know any other way to describe it. What things would you encourage for athletes right now to be doing on a regular basis? Cause obviously can't get down to the ballpark and have a game. What things would you tell people, tell players to do while they're at home? You know, I've had uh, people on Twitter message me and I've, I've had um, family friends who, who have athletes as, as kids message me asking for workouts. What can they do? And I'm like, you know, you can get on YouTube and, and, and type in five minute push up workout or anything like that. And I said, that's easy. I said, take this time and take off of sports a little bit. And I know that's difficult for a lot of people to hear. They don't know how to register that train your brain, read something. I, I used to love sitting in my office uh, when I'd be working on stuff and I would listen to interviews that Kobe Bryant did and, and the Mamba mentality and everything like that and, and read, get on Amazon, get a couple books. I, uh, one thing I learned a couple of years ago at a convention was keep a running book list on Amazon, a wish list. People suggest a book, put it on there. You know, don't buy it right now. Just wait till the time it's right. And I've got like eight or nine books on there. And I'm just waiting uh, here in the next day or two. I'm going to decide on which one I'm going to dive into next. And, you know, anything by John Gordon, the energy bus, which was life changing for me. Uh, I would suggest for anybody who's never heard of it, read the energy bus. But I would suggest take this time, train your brain and study your muscles for once. Absolutely. Absolutely. So last question I have for you, Jay, you know, looking towards the future, assuming everything clears up and we get back into our regular routine come the fall, what are your goals for your softball team in the next 
three, five years that you have laid out? Um, goodness. <laughs> Man, that's a good question. That's no one really asked me. I did a five year plan five years ago and it's working out pretty good, but uh, <laughs> I haven't done another one since. Um, I would say this, I would say uh, I want to be known as a prominent program, maybe not even for wins and losses, but um, people want to attend Lake Sumter State College. Uh, they want to be a part of our program. Um, I think there's those obvious compete for a conference championship, compete to go to the World Series, everything like that. I would like to see in the next five years 100% graduation rate. I think that would make me uh, sleep rather easy at night is 100% graduation rate and 100% of my girls who want to go on and play four-year ball going on and playing four-year ball. Yeah, that's absolutely – that's a great goal. So, Jay, thank you for coming on today. And just so you know, I don't know if I've put this out there yet, but your letter that we actually posted a couple weeks ago that we talked about is actually in the top 10 all-time uh, articles already for Not Any Know-It-All. And Wow. Yeah, it just took off and – it blew. I know Kelly and I have talked about it a few times that you know we've had some pretty big articles, pretty big things pop out, but yours, it was just amazing. The way it impacted lives. I know I've had a lot of people talking about it. You know, it really was amazing. And thank you for writing that. Well, that's amazing. That's I, I appreciate you guys saying that. Uh, that that was me going to bed at night and my sister going, you know, uh, hey, you're the only one who's ever experienced this. How crazy is this? And I went. I am one of the only people to ever. And so I just wanted to get it out there that, Hey man, this isn't the end all be all. We just got to learn from it and come together, but that's awesome. And, and, and I hope to write for you guys in the future. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. You're always welcome to write. So thank you very much, Jay. Have a good day. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again later. Uh, you as well. Stay safe. Thank you. So guys, once again, that was the head coach of Lake Sumner state college. That is, uh, Jay, he has been, once again, a great supporter of 90 Know-It-All. He wrote for the What Baseball Means to Me article a couple months ago, I believe. And uh, then, of course, wrote the newest article that is up there. And that one is uh, pretty powerful. If you haven't read it, um, I'll actually attach that link to uh, the podcast as well. Because that, that one is really cool. It's one that when I read it, it, even though I haven't experienced it in the way others have, it's still it pulled on my heartstrings. So, so with that guys, this was actually episode 10 of the nine, any know it all podcast. So thankful that we're on this number 10 and still moving forward. I've got actually podcast number 11 going to be recorded in about three and a half hours, actually recording two podcasts today. The second one won't be put out probably until Saturday, maybe f tomorrow. Uh, just depends on how things work out. Also going to give a quick shout out to the daily news. Um, they're actually going to be photographing me doing the podcast as a part of their, uh, what people are doing during the quarantine. So they'll be outside my house photographing through my window because uh, they're not allowed to come in uh, part of their own thing, but it's just, you know, doing, we're doing whatever we can to get positive stories out there. And that's really what the podcast is about. It's about doing something to get people thinking about something other than the virus you know and you know we still want you guys to take care of yourself stay home wash your hands do all that stuff but at the same time we don't want you thinking about it 24 hours a day it's not good for you uh, this is a hopefully a relief and a moment to get away so once again guys with that i am josh the 90 know-it-all thank you so much for listening thank you again to jay for coming on i man i appreciate it so much it is it's fun to be able to talk to just people around the country who, you know, love baseball, love softball, you know, as much as I do. So guys with that, I want to wrap it up, have a good day. And I'm sure I'll catch you guys again on the next podcast.